Hi, I'm Andy Webb and welcome to my channel. I'm an award-winning money blogger over at BeCleverWithYourCash.com which I set up around six years ago but you might also have seen me on Channel 5's Shop Smart Save Money or you might have heard my podcast Cash Chats. Basically all of those and this YouTube channel, they are just some of the ways which I try to help you get the most from your money, whether that's saving money, making money, or just better managing it, okay? Now, if that all sounds good to you, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any other videos. That little notification bell as well will give you an alert when they're released. And if this is useful as I'm speaking, as I'm telling you what's going on, hit that thumbs up because that also is gonna help other people find this video, which is gonna be uh, really, really good for me and for them in terms of helping us all get better with their money. Now, in today's video, what I want to talk to you about is what's inside this wallet. This is a wallet which I have tucked away for when I go overseas, when I go abroad on holidays for business, whatever it might be. I get this wallet out because it has a few useful things in there. I've got some dollars that are left over from a previous holiday. I've got five euros and I've got some coins in here as well, a mix of American and European stuff. I've got an EHIC European health insurance card in there. And I've also got uh, these. This is a selection of different cards that I've got. And these are specialist cards which I use for when I go abroad because they do not charge me a fee for spending uh, in bars, in cafes, in shops, hotels, whatever it might be, taxis. And they also don't charge me when I take money out of a cash machine. Really, really, really important. Um, because if you use your normal debit or credit card, there's a very, very, very good chance that you are going to get hit with extra fees on top. Now, depending where you are in the world, you might get hit with just a penalty, simply a charge for using your card uh, in abroad. But you're also likely to get hit with a uh, what they call a load fee. So you've got the normal exchange rate, which is normally decided by the card provider, so your Visa or your MasterCard, but they put more on top of that as well. And they're basically making a profit from what you spend overseas. So unless you have already got a specialist card, and I'm not gonna go through every single one of the options because some of the cards you have, uh, they might be perfectly good. They might not be the best, but they might be perfectly good. There are lots of different options. But just double check, first of all, what the charges are if you use your existing cards. I think you'll probably find if you haven't already got something, then you're gonna to wanna to open up one of these cards, which I'll take you through. So that's the main thing to think about when you're spending overseas, get one of these cards. Two other points that are worth considering. One of them is get more than one. Okay, I would always have a backup card if you can. Now, I've had situations where I was pickpocketed once in Argentina, so it's really useful to have a backup card. Um, you might uh, have a problem with transactions. We've seen that very recently with the whole Wirecard thing, people who used cards which used a third party, a German company called Wirecard, to process their transactions. That went under all payments of pause. You couldn't use their cards. We've seen things in the past like TSB, when all their app banking and they had problems all over the world. You know, things like that, you might not actually physically be able to use your card, so a backup is really useful. Um, and finally, the other thing is when you are using your card, when you're spending with it, make sure you always pay in the local currency. You've probably seen this, you're given that option that says, do you want to pay in pounds? And you go, oh, well, that makes it nice and simple. I know exactly what I've spent. No, don't do that, because if you do, you'll get charged the exchange rate and the fees that the local kind of payment process, the people who are operating that transaction wants rather than that fee-free transaction you'll get with using one of these specialist cards. So which one do you use? What do you go for? As I showed you, I've got a few different options in here and there are a few new ones to share as well. And the main things to consider are you've got debit cards, you've got credit cards, you've got prepaid cards, and you've also got smart cards. Now, all of them have their benefits. Some of them are better than others. Some of them have some quite uh, substantial downsides. So I'm gonna take you through uh, each of those and a couple of picks for those types of cards as I go along. So you can hopefully make those applications. Uh, it can sometimes take you a while for it to come through to you, can't it, as well? So you wanna kind of start thinking about it now. Even if you're not planning to go abroad, immediately get that card in your wallet for when you do want to go away. Uh, another thing you need to think about is Visa versus MasterCard. Um, that was a useful thing I found in the past as well. A uh, long time ago now, sort of six, seven years ago, traveling in South America, I found that although you'd expect everywhere to take MasterCard, a few places, particularly around sort of uh, Uruguay and Bolivia, probably changed now, but there only the Visa managed to work, the MasterCard didn't. So it's always worth, I think, as well as having backups, making sure you've got a, a split between the Visa and the MasterCard, if you can. Okay, not the end of the world, but it's a nice thing to think about. Right, let's start with debit cards, and I think these are probably the best ones. They are the all-rounders, that first edition, and probably your primary card when you're spending overseas. 
Now, uh, there are a couple of really good ones. I've got uh, a couple here. I have got it's here, the Starling card uh, with its kind of minty color, and I've got the Monzo with its hot coral pink. Uh, I had the Monzo one, first of all, for overseas travel. Don't really use that one so much anymore. Starling is the main card that I use, uh, and it's probably my top pick for you right now. I've got a whole separate video that you can watch, which takes you through uh, the comparisons between Starling and Monzo and Revolut. So check that out if you're interested about these banks. If you haven't heard of them, essentially that's because they're not high street banks. They are ones which are only opened via your phone. You download the app uh, and you open them and access them completely via your mobile phone via the app, but they're pretty good. And what's great about the two of them is there is zero charges on top of any spending you do with your debit card. And you can also, uh, you won't be charged for any money you take out with your, out of the ATM with the card as well, which is fantastic. Um, a third option to throw into the mix is a relatively new one, it's Virgin Money. Uh, again, no charges for using your card or withdrawing cash from an ATM, unless of course the local ATM wants to charge you money. You can't do anything about that, okay? Apart from maybe look around for a different cash machine. Now, the reason why I would say you want to go for Starling and probably Virgin Money over Monzo is because Monzo does have a cap on how much money you can take out of a cash machine before a fee starts getting charged. Uh, if you already have a Monzo, I don't think it's probably worth switching and getting um, another one of these cards to replace it if you're happy with your Monzo. But if you're starting from scratch, go for Starling, possibly Virgin Money. Virgin Money is quite interesting because you can also get 2.02% interest on the first £1,000 you have of savings in that account, which might give it a bit of an edge over Starling. Now, the important thing here is you do not have to make this your main current account. You can literally, literally apply for it on the phone, really quick to do, really easy, comes in the post. Um, and then, like I have, put it in your wallet for when you next go abroad. You don't have to, to worry about it at all. So it's a simple thing to get. Okay, so that's debit cards. Let's talk about credit cards now. Why would you bother with a credit card if I've already shared with you some very good debit cards which won't charge you anything at all? Well, there are a couple of advantages that you get with a credit card. Uh, primarily, and one of the most important ones out there, is Section 75 protection. Now, you probably know about this already. You get this on purchases in the UK. If it costs more than £100, something goes wrong, it doesn't arrive, it isn't what you expected, then you can make a claim to the credit card company because they are equally liable alongside whoever provided you with the product or the service. So this can be really handy, particularly when you're away. Uh, it might be more difficult to get refunds if something's not up to scratch, or it could be something like a flight, you know, that you're buying in a different currency. If you've got a credit card, it costs that much, extra protection, and if it's a fee-free card, then obviously you're not gonna get charged the fees as well. So that's an important thing to think about. Uh, another thing you might have sort of come across when you're abroad is sometimes when you use your card, it wants to pre-authorize a payment. Now you get this at petrol stations sometimes, don't you? When you're doing the self-service, you put the card in and it will kind of allow you to take up to like 100 pounds worth of petrol, although you're never gonna do that. It would do the same thing uh, if you were abroad. It would say, right, authorize up to $99, 99 euros, whatever it might be. So you can get the money. And then afterwards, it will actually only charge you what you used. Uh, hotels, they might want to take a deposit to cover any extra expenses. Okay, not going to be huge necessarily, but mini bar, things like that. Extra services you might want to take in the hotel. You might want to charge uh, restaurant meals, uh, spa days, anything like that. They can all also get pre-authorized uh, from that credit card. Um, and one of the biggest ones is if you are hiring a car, because then that kind of amount of money that needs to be ring fenced in case there's any damage, in case there's any speeding fines, whatever it might be, that's going to be huge. Now, some debit cards are going to be fine for that, okay? So you might be okay. Prepaid cards probably won't be okay. You might struggle with those. But if you've got a credit card, then you are going to be okay. As long as there's enough money on there, the credit limit is high enough, and there's not enough spending on there already. A credit card is the perfect thing for any of those overseas transactions where you have to put down some kind of uh, ring-fenced pre-authorized amount. And again, you wanna make sure that you're not using your standard credit card, that you are using one of those fee-free cards out there. So uh, what ones should you think about? Um, well, there are uh, a few different ones out there. There's a nice little selection. I've got one which is the, I've had it for a long time now. I've got the Halifax Clarity credit card. You can still get this one. It's a long running one. Lots of people have this because it's been around to say for a long time. Uh, and it's pretty good. I don't use it as my main card uh, because I use the Starling debit card, but it's very, very good. And it won't charge me anything at all for making purchases. It won't add anything extra on top for any cash with machine withdrawals. However, what it does do and what a few of the other credit cards will do is it will start charging me interest straight away on ATM withdrawals and the cash that you take out. 
Now, if you have a card like this already, or the one you apply for has a similar feature, so because most of the credit cards do charge you that interest, there's a very simple workaround. You simply transfer your money from your current account to your credit card straight away, and that means you've paid it off and you won't get charged that interest. Bit faffy though, um, so the other option obviously is not to use it for cash withdrawals, use your Starling or your Virgin Money or your Monzo or something like that to take the money out and not use the credit cards. However, if you want a bit of an all-rounder, there are a couple of decent options out there. Uh, the one right now, again, these can change, so keep an eye over on the blog on becleverwithyourcash.com uh, where I'll regularly update a kind of an article which takes you through the best cards uh, for spending overseas. But right now, the Barclay Card Rewards account is pretty good because it doesn't charge you anything at all for uh, no interest at all or no fees for taking money out of a cash machine as well as you know no fees uh, for spending. Plus, it will give you 0.25% cash back on all your purchases, both home and abroad. So at home, that's no point doing that. You can get much better rates from other cards, which again, uh, I've got lots of information all about that. But overseas, that is the best cash back rate you can get. So it might be useful to earn a little bit extra while you're spending abroad. Sadly, the one I did use for a long time, the Tandem credit card, which offered 0.5%, that finished early in 2020. So you can't use that one anymore. Well, you can, but it's not worth it because I've added extra charges on top. So that Barclay card reward is pretty good. It's also a Visa card, which is useful. I mentioned before, it's useful to have a Visa and a MasterCard. So if you've got the Starling or the Monzo or the Virgin Money, which are all MasterCards, that Barclay card is a Visa card in your wallet as well. So a handy uh, alternative if the MasterCard, for some reason, shouldn't happen, but if for some reason, it's not accepted. Now, if you can't get that Barclay card, or you don't want that Barclay card, then I would say have a check out that Halifax Clarity card. It's still really good despite the interest being charged on cash withdrawals. And the Santander Zero, very, very similar. Uh, Fee-free spending, uh, fee-free cash withdrawals, but interest charged on money you two take out of a cash machine. Now, with any credit card that you apply for, whether it's for spending overseas or just broadly anywhere else, a couple of really important things to remember. Number one, make sure you do an eligibility check. You know, so it's basically before you apply, you can do it on comparison sites or you can do it directly on the bank's websites. You put some details in and it will tell you your likelihood that you're gonna get accepted for this card. Really important because if you just apply blindly and you get rejected, that's gonna hit your credit score. So it's important to know that you're applying for something, you've got a good chance of getting it. And secondly, any money that you put on a credit card, you wanna make sure you completely clear it before that month is up. Because if you get charged interest, it's going to wipe out any of your savings at all. Now, of course, personally, I think it's safer to use your debit card, that Starling or Monzo or Virgin Money for most of your transactions. Um, but that's a really useful backup when something's expensive and you want an extra 70, Section 75 protection. When you have some sort of pre-authorization to put down uh, or when you maybe just sort of need a, a backup alternative to mix the money around. So that's your debit and your credit cards. Lots of great options there. One of each. Perfect, you're probably sorted to go away, but I think it's quite handy to have a third option. And the one that I think you should get as your third backup, that spare, is something called Curve. Now, I've got a whole video you can watch about Curve, which goes into detail about how it works and what it is. But essentially, it's not opening a new debit or credit card. It's a smart card which you attach underneath it uh, your existing bank card. So let's say your existing bank card, your existing debit card, charges you 2.99% on every single transaction you make overseas. If you use that card, but with Curve above it, so you're tapping with Curve, you're paying with Curve, but it takes the money from your, your existing bank account, that fee won't come across because Curve is also fee free on spending. Now there are restrictions depending on which type of Curve you have. There's the basic one, the blue one is free, and that's probably the best one to go for. There is a kind of 500 pound limit every single month on how much transactions you can make and 200 pound limit on ATM withdrawals. But again, this is your third card. This is your extra backup, which you can leave in the suitcase locked away at the hotel, just in case when you're out and about, you do lose your wallet or it gets pickpocketed or whatever it might be, or if there's some sort of problem. Now, it isn't without its own problems as we saw in June 2020 when its payment processing firm uh, had problems. But again, that can happen to any of the cards that you use. There's always likely to be a problem why we have more than one, but I think Curb is a perfect third option. Now, finally, I want to touch very quickly on prepaid cards. Now, I don't really use these at all anymore. I've got one in my wallet, which is something called uh, WeSwap, uh, and there are other options out there. Um, but generally, the reason you might want to get one in the past was, well, budgeting. They were great for that. You only had, say, £500 to spend. You put £500 on your prepaid card. That was your holiday money. No chance of spending more than you can afford. 
if you lost your card again only the money that on that card was was going to be used but potentially by the thieves they couldn't access anything else in your account so they had lovely little extras like that however they often came with quite expensive fees to put money on them to take money off if you didn't use them they weren't always the best things which is why you don't really see uh, the muse as much now and because they've been sort of supplanted they've been replaced by the likes of those debit cards with uh, starling and monzo and you can even treat your starling or your monzo a bit like a prepaid card as i mentioned before if you want to if you just use it for traveling just load the money up there that you want to use while you're abroad again so can't spend more than you want to and if it gets stolen the thieves can't access any more cash if it's your primary account then you can move money out of um, your main account into a separate pot or a space so again the thieves can't access any of that separated cash they can only access what is in your current account that main account at that time so you don't really need them for those purposes i guess the one reason you might want to look at a prepaid card is if you are happy to try and play the kind of uh, the exchange rate game you know look at the currencies when they're dropping when they're a good time to buy them because you can kind of lock in at a certain price with a prepaid card so that means uh, not just to kind of if you want to sort of get the best value and keep it in there for when you want to go abroad it might also be useful if you're budgeting and you want to sort of factor against any sudden uh, increase uh, in the uh, the exchange rate which would mean the money that you've got isn't worth uh, the money you've got in sterling doesn't get as much as you want in that currency and um, lots of different cards out there but you might want to look here instead at something like transfer wise uh, which i've got a transfer wise card here as well kind of nice bright green that they have um, or a revolute um, pros and cons to both of those as well they aren't necessarily going to be fee free uh, for everything you want to do but you can hold different currencies um, in them at any time starling also has an option to hold a euro account as well uh, there is a small exchange rate to swap from pound to euros uh, but again if you want to keep some money in there all the time they're well worth looking at but primarily in summary i think you should be going for a debit card as your main card to use overseas and i would go with starling as the number one card because it's easy to get there's no credit check and there are no charges at all for using it then i would be looking at getting a backup credit card to use for those expensive purchases where you want a bit of extra protection or where you need to put down some kind of deposit the Barclay card reward card is the best one right now and it's a visa which gives you a little bit more flexibility in case MasterCard isn't accepted uh, but again there are some other options out there uh, just do bear in mind some of those other options will charge you that interest on any cash withdrawal so you want to clear that uh, really quickly and in fact any spending on that credit card you've got to clear it so you don't get charged interest and finally that third card I'd have in my wallet would be a curve card linked to one of my other current accounts credit cards whichever it might be just to give me that flexibility to spend abroad if I have a problem with one of those first two cards thank you so much for watching remember if you haven't already please do hit that subscribe button and that notification bell and also give me the thumbs up if you can hit that little like button if you found this useful until next time cheers and don't forget there are plenty more videos here on the channel to watch to help you get the most from your money here are a couple recent ones that you might enjoy